one thing I am as guilty as as the next crafter is buying a reinker with every ink pad and never really using it to its full potential. So yes, you can reink your distress ink and oxide pads with these reinkers, but what else can you do with them? I've got five different ideas for you so you get the most out of these little bottles of colour. So let's start with how do you actually use a reinker? As I say, many of us buy them, but do you know how to use them? So with oxides, you will need to shake them first. You're going to have the pigment element settle down the bottom. You can probably see that a bit more here in this rustic wilderness color. And you really want to make sure that's been shaken up as much as possible. That's not necessary with the inks because the inks are a dye base. They don't have a pigment floating around inside them. So I'm going to take the oxide for now and I'm going to be sticking with the same two colours throughout this video uh, and I'll maybe use a mix of oxides and inks. So I'm going to thoroughly shake my oxide first of all. Always make sure you've got some kitchen towel or something absorbent like that and some water for clean up nearby. Then I'm just going to place a few drops, five or six drops, I think I went seven there, onto my pad. And I'll take something like this is a silicon um, spatula. This one actually is from Craft Stash. I'll make sure it's linked down below. And I just give some gentle pressure and just spread that through. Now I tend to do a little bit at a time. And as you can see, that has spread right across the pad. I'll stamp that, make sure that I've got an adequate enough of ink on there. If I feel I need more, I'll repeat the process again. Now by doing that, you're only using a few tiny drops of the reinker. So let's delve straight into now how else we can be using these reinker bottles. So first let's create our own ombre ink pad. You can create this in absolutely any colour you have got the reinkers for. So I'm going to work with inks for this one rather than oxides and I'm going to use a piece of craft foam. This is like children's craft foam. I buy it in a huge pack of multicoloured foam because very often I'm not actually seeing the foam. I'm using it for techniques like this stamping and I, it doesn't matter what colour it comes in so I buy really inexpensive foam for my crafting. I'm going to put some drops of the ink into the foam so one there that's the speckled egg and then on this side I'm going to do the rustic wilderness. I'm going to take my spatula again and just spread that around on the foam. Now this is going to slowly start soaking in. You can do this if you've seen it before on the on a baby wipe um, but that does I find tend to water down the ink ever so slightly now I put loads on here I didn't need half as much as I've put on but hopefully you can see all that so there's the green I'm just going to wipe my spatula clean and then repeat with the blue spreading that around and what you really want to do is make sure you get a nice mix between the two colors as well and I do this just by dabbing like so so I've got a blue to green ombre. Let's take this feather stamp and I'm just going to press this into the ink really carefully, making sure that my acrylic block doesn't actually touch the foam at all. And you can do this a couple of times to ensure that your entire stamp is inked up. But because of the foam, you get a little bit of flexibility in the base of your homemade ink pad now. So you should be able to capture all the areas. And then let's see how this looks. So I'm giving that a really good press down because naturally we've got different pools of colour there. So I'm just making sure that I'm capturing everything. And there we go. Beautiful. I've gone from green up to blues in there. That's stunning. But what if you want to pick out parts of an image on a stamp with a particular colour. So for example with this butterfly if I wanted to go from dark green in the middle out to the light blue on the outside and let's do this one with oxides. So this time I'm going to ink my stamp with a little bit of black first of all. It doesn't have to be black it can be absolutely any colour but it's going to be a really light coating. I just want to be able to see whereabouts the butterfly sits. Just like so that's perfect that doesn't need to be any better than that i'm going to make sure i wipe all of that black off and allow that to thoroughly dry as well so now that's completely dry i'm going to put my um distress oxide the green first of all which is the color i wanted in the center over the butterfly here 
I've got the antenna as well. This doesn't have to be precise, making sure that I'm going right up to and a little bit over each of the lines. And you could do two or three colours here, you could even do more. If you've got a flower, you could do the blue flower head and the green stem. If you've got um, a bird or whatever it may be that's different colours, you can create your own perfect stamp pad for this. So now I'm just going to, again, just spread this around a little bit, just dragging some of that ink out. It will start soaking into the foam. And here I want to ombre that or mix that into the blue. So I'm just using the edge of the foam applicator there just to do that. Again, making sure you're spreading the colour over the edges of the stamped image, just in case you stamp slightly off next time you're still going to get colour all over your stamp. Now I usually let that sit for a few minutes just to kind of soak into the foam a little. Again, you can do this on a wet wipe if you prefer. And then you're going to press your stamp into all that lovely ink, knowing that you're pressing it exactly where you want it. Now this does suction and pick up onto the stamp usually. So I can just now move that around ever so slightly. See me just switching it underneath the stamp there, making sure all parts of the stamp have got ink on, peel it off, and a clean piece of cardstock. And there we have the green centre and the blue body. I've got a little tiny bit of the blue there that's just pressed, I can see that on here as well, just pressed into the centre. But that's fine look at that we've got the two-tone colors absolutely beautiful and you can reuse this for a long long time before it's going to dry now we can also make our own colored sprays and spritzes so taking an empty bottle and these are readily available from any craft shop you can place your ink or your oxide inside i prefer personally to go with inks for this method purely because they don't need shaking the pigment doesn't need mixing each time so I'm just going to take off the lid and I've got about an inch, a couple of centimetres of water in here because I may well change my mind about the colour spray that I want later on. So I tend to only make up a little bit at a time. And in that water, let's put maybe three drops of the ink in. Remember, this is really fully saturated ink. So you can see the colour there. Let's screw this on, give that a good shake. Look how deep and dark that is. Now you can, of course, always test this out. And then once you're happy with the colour, you can leave it. But if you want to, you can continue to add more and more ink until you've got the depth of colour that you want. So let's, let's get that coming through. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So that pale colour, and I have just lifted that up because there was a lot of water already in the nozzle, that pale colour was three drops of ink. So I'm going to add another, probably another three again. Ensuring I always put the lid back on my bottles before I carry on because I am very clumsy. I'm going to spritz into the tissue the first few spritzes until that deeper colour starts coming through and look at that beautiful so i can now get on with my mixed media techniques with these colors or you can create custom colors so for example let's wipe this off again and just turn this over what if we added some speckled egg ink to our green to our rustic wilderness now because i've got around about six drips into of the green into the water i'm going to add around about the same of the blue and the blue is a lighter colour than the green, it's not quite as strong so it may mean that we need to add more blue in a moment. I'm going to take a larger piece of paper for this because I don't want to be spritzing over the edge. Really mix this up, let's give this a moment to come through as well. And now we've gone from that gorgeous green to a turquoise colour and you can be mixing your colours as much as you want, two or three colours if you want, even more perhaps, to get these beautiful different blends. Now I've mixed myself up some watercolours using my reinkers. I tend to use the Distress inks here rather than the oxides again, but if you like that chalky look, you can do this with oxides too. So I've got a few drops of each colour in this. So this is green, this is blue, and as you can see, they're so highly concentrated, you can't really see the colour at the moment. 
um, and then these are mixes of those colours in case I want to use those too. I've added just a tiny bit of water to each one, um, a very tiny amount just by brushing a few drips off the edge there and I'm using a round pointed brush and let's just create some really pretty flowers. There, that's pretty much dry and how beautiful is that all created with your distress ink reinkers and just two colors as well you can almost see some pinks coming out here from the speckled egg now you can also use your reinkers for coloring your mediums such as this paste this is a texture paste it's dimensional paste from Sizzix. I'm just going to put a little bit onto my plate here I don't need a lot I'm just going to be showing you I've already got some green on my silicon applicator there and I'm going to add a couple of drops and only a couple of drops of, I've got Distress Oxide speckled egg there, but I've also got a little bit of green on my spatula so this may be a bit of a mix and you just want to work that in until it's a nice creamy mix. Once again, try this with um, different colours, so different colour mixes if you want. Let's see what this looks like when it's stenciled. So again, I'm going to be using my uh, silicon brush just to stencil through here. And look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? And you've got your custom colour texture paste or medium, whatever it may be. You can do ombres with this. You can store this in a pot as long as it's watertight. It's going to keep for a very long time. Just bear in mind though, by adding the inks, whether it is inks or oxides, you will get different colours, different shades, depending on which you use. The more colour you add, the more liquid your paste is going to become. It will become a little more watery. So if you like it to stay thick, only add a little bit of colour. So if you've known me for any time at all, you'll know how much I love my gel plate. And these gel plates are perfect for doing smooshing with your Distress Ink or Oxide reinkers. I'm going to mix these colours again, although green will be the prominent one, it will be the stronger colour again. So I am going to, just went off the edge there, I am going to put a lot more of the speckled egg down. These are all water reactive and they are water based so you can definitely be mixing these with as much water as you want to lighten the colour. I'm just going to lift that up there. I'm going to spritz with water and allow those colours to start moving around and then I'm going to press some paper into these and pick that up. So I'm just going to give that a little wiggle. Now I'm using my gel plate for this because it's habit but you don't have to use a gel plate for this part you can do but you can also use a glass plate a glass mat an acrylic blocks or even some acetate will work you're going to get messy as well so let's lift this up there's a lot of ink on this plate so there's going to be a lot of ink on this bit of paper here but look at that as a background now I've set that aside to dry that will take a little while but equally look what we've got we've still got more to play with of course I'm going to press into this again, lift up what I can. This time I'm not going to move it around too much, I'm just going to concentrate on soaking up as much liquid as possible. There we go, now the colours are starting to blend together a little more. But I've still got colour on there, I definitely, definitely do not want to be wasting this. So I'm going to take the nozzle from my water and I'm going to flick into this which is going to give us some different splatters and colour variations through there so not applying too much water but can you see where that water's sitting now we're getting these colours kind of deepen around the edges and then I'm going to lift that up as well and you will get some really nice colour variations from this even if you just use one shade or one reinker colour There. Now we've got our blobs of water, as you can see there, just separating that colour. Now again, I've still got lots of water on here. I can keep reapplying water, reactivating that ink, and then pulling more ink off until there's nothing left. 
so I'd love to know from you which of these techniques is your favourite, which ones will you be trying and are there any that you haven't yet heard of before and if you've got any tips or techniques using Distress reinkers or any sort of ink pad reinkers, please do let everybody else know in the comments. Thank you for joining me everybody, take care, I'll see you again very soon.